Cosentina, a small town nestled in the hills between Valencia and Alicante, provides a poignant reminder of the potential dangers of the chemicals we take for granted in our everyday lives. In 1992, a textile company called Ardistil instructed its workers to spray a dye stuff which was designed to be applied by a roller. This may sound like a minor departure from normal practice, but it had disastrous consequences. When the workers in this factory sprayed the dye, its particles filled the air like fog. Six young employees later died from having inhaled the toxic substance, and 80 more contracted serious lung diseases. One of the innocent victims was the daughter of Amparo Pascual, who now acts as spokeswoman for the survivors of the accident. Estamos viviendo en un mundo realmente tóxico. De momento te levantas, eh, estás en un mundo de, de veneno. In 2003, a Spanish court ruled that Ardistil had used dangerous chemicals in its factory and had failed to show its workers how to handle them. In addition, it concluded that the serious lung damage suffered by the workers was directly related to the lack of preventative measures and exposure to a cocktail of chemicals. Pascual campaigns with other victims and relatives of victims, such as Chelo Ragues, to prevent a repeat of the Ardistil tragedy. We have to go to the final. Para que sepan que con la, la vida de las niñas no se juega. La vida de las niñas no hay dinero para pagarlas. Las que han muerto y las que viven, que están enfermas. Ragues knows all too well about the effects of exposing youngsters to toxic chemicals. Her 18 and 20 year old daughters died from inhaling poisonous fumes in the Ardistil company. She now devotes her life to fighting for justice for the victims of the accident and for tighter controls on dangerous chemicals. Se debe investigar. Y, y si son malos, retirarlos. Cueste lo que cueste. This is precisely what a new EU chemicals regulation known as REACH aims to do. If the law had been in place in the early 1990s, data on the dangerous substances contained in the dye would have been available, along with advice on whether it could be sprayed or not. REACH will help prevent similar cases from happening elsewhere in Europe where dangerous chemicals are currently being used in factories and other industries. The Spanish textile industry has come a long way since the Ardistil disaster. At this Madrid fashion show, organized by Greenpeace and a handful of young Spanish designers, none of the clothes was produced using any of six highly toxic chemicals otherwise frequently used in textiles. Spanish clothing giant Mango, which has over 900 shops in 83 countries, supports the campaign to replace hazardous chemicals with safer alternatives. Along with other leading companies such as Adidas, Nokia, Dell and Ikea, it has made a pledge to phase out six of the most dangerous chemicals used in its products. I see perfectly possible to substitute the toxic chemicals that can exist at this time in the textile industry by other alternative substances. Alternatives. Substituting dangerous chemicals with less hazardous ones is at the heart of the REACH regulation. Under the new law, uses of substances of very high concern will have to be authorized, and eventually these chemicals will be phased out and replaced by safer alternatives. Mango, which supports REACH, believes its policy of phasing out toxic chemicals will not lead to higher costs for shoppers. Studies carried out for the European Commission also show the benefits for human health, dwarfing the cost to industry by a ratio of almost 10 to 1. The uh, uh, medical expenses for uh, chemicals related diseases will be uh, less. Uh, medicines will not be needed. We shall not um, uh, lose uh, working hours and uh, productivity will be better. So the overall uh, benefits of fridge will by far uh, outweigh the cost to the industry. The chemicals industry is the third largest manufacturing sector in the EU, employing 1.9 million people in 31,000 companies. But in recent years, its reputation has suffered as more and more studies have linked hazardous chemicals to falling sperm counts, increases in breast and testicular cancer, and a host of environmental problems such as soil and water pollution and the thinning of the ozone layer. It's true that the uh, image of the chemical industry is not ranking first in public opinions uh, because there are fears about chemicals, about the, the hazards. So if we can demonstrate through REACH that uh, well-documented dossier about uh, hazard exposure and risk and uh, proper risk management uh, is in place or is improved, 
we can indeed uh, enhance the confidence in chemicals. Under REACH, which will replace 40 pieces of existing EU legislation, companies will have to show that the substances they use or sell are safe. They will also have to provide a new EU chemicals agency in Helsinki with data on the properties of the substances they manufacture or import, information which will be provided to other companies downstream in the supply chain and available to the public on the internet. We need chemicals. After all, almost everything we use in our daily life is made from or contains them. When we think about um, chemical pollution, we think about big smokestacks, polluted smokestacks and chemical factory exploding. But unfortunately, a lot of the exposure comes also from the consumer products that we bring home. Um, the pajamas, the perfumes that we wear, the, the laptops that we have to work with. And many of them um, release hazardous chemicals into the environment. The problem, as this website created by the European Consumers Organization Bayok shows, is that we are often unaware of the potentially dangerous chemicals found in the most banal household items. Soaps may contain parabens, which interfere with the hormonal system, and towels might contain formaldehyde, which has been classified as carcinogenic, poisonous and corrosive. Washing up liquids contain a cocktail of chemicals which can irritate the eyes, throat and lungs. Bed sheets may contain formaldehyde and even traces of the banned pesticide DDT. And although a dangerous softening agent that causes development problems has been removed from PVC baby toys, other PVC items may still contain it. Most consumers believe that whatever is on the market must be safe for use, and they expect industry and authorities to ensure that for them. The problem is that 99% of the chemicals used in everyday products have never been tested. With so little information available, no wonder shoppers at this supermarket outside Brussels are anxious about what chemicals are in the products they buy and the effects of these substances on them and their children. It worries me a little because not knowing what I'm exposing the children to or you know, um, how it'll affect them later. On n'a pas assez d'informations et on hésite pour acheter plein de produits. Vraiment, on hésite, on essaie de chercher des des trucs naturels et mais quand même c'est pas facile. C'est vrai que je suis particulièrement sensible et que ça m'inquiète qu'on ne le soit pas plus. Reach won't impose any new labeling requirements on manufacturers, but consumers will, for the first time, be able to shop safe in the knowledge that the chemicals in the products they buy have been tested and labeled accordingly, and that the most dangerous substances have either been banned or will be progressively substituted by safer alternatives. Under the new regulation, better human health, a safer environment, and a more sustainable European chemical industry are all within our reach.